Um, let me read to you from the prescription that Socrates gives for how to avoid, just like Washington, right? How to keep your soul pure of this thing inside you, right? That is wanting to be ruled by your momentary desires. Because before you talk about politics at all, you got to be talking about your own soul, right? So here's, um, here's what Socrates says. So he's talking, he makes a distinction between uh, necessary and unnecessary pleasures and desires. So like you have to eat, right? That's a necessary pleasure, right? Um, but he says, of those unnecessary pleasures, there are, in my opinion, some that are hostile to law and probably come to be in everyone. But when checked by the laws and the better desires with the help of argument in some human beings are entirely gotten rid of or of only a few weak ones are left, while in others, stronger and more numerous ones remain. And those stronger ones are the ones that wake up in sleep when the rest of the soul, all that belongs to the calculating tame and ruling part of it slumbers, while the beastly and wild part, gorged with food or drink, is skittish and putting sleep away, seeks to go and satisfy its dispositions. You know that in such a state, it dares to do everything as though it were released from and rid of all shame and prudence. And it doesn't shrink from attempting intercourse as it supposes with a mother or with anyone else. He's talking about dreams, right? He says dreams are kind of our unfettered, what Freud would call the id, right? They're, they are this um, just indicator that deep down within us, there is still this many-headed beast kind of thrashing about. And no matter how civilized we've become in sleep, we realize um, that there is still the part of us, right? That even though we train ourselves out of acting on this, like we always have to be vigilant against these desires. He says, I can suppose a man who has a healthy and moderate relationship to himself and who goes to sleep only after he does the following. First, he awakens his calculating part and feasts it on fair arguments and considerations, coming to an understanding with himself. Second, he feeds the desiring part in such a way that it is neither in want nor surfeited, in order that it will rest and not disturb the best part by its joy or its pain, but rather leave the best part alone, pure and by itself, to consider and to long for the perception of something that it doesn't know, either something that has been or is or is going to be. And third, he soothes the spirited part in the same way and does not fall asleep with his spirit aroused because there are some he got angry at. So don't rage tweet before bed, guys. <laughs> I, I'm speaking to myself here too, right? Um, no, this is actually really still just excellent advice. You have three parts of your soul. You have a reason, you have your like courage or your anger, your thumos, your, your sort of manly passions. Even if you're a woman, you still have thumos. Um, and then you have your appetites and your desires. And he says, you know, satisfy your desires. Don't uh, don't starve yourself of uh, satisfaction, but don't overindulge either. Pursue a moderate course so that then they're not, you know, inflamed basically when you go to bed. Like don't eat uh, two pizzas right, right at midnight before bed. Um, and, and uh, you know, calm your your anger, right? Don't let, don't go to bed angry, right? Classic, you know, let not the sun set on your anger, kind of classic advice from the Bible, um, from Paul. And then, uh, and then stimulate your rational right? Then find some food uh, for your rational part. Reflect upon your day, pray to God, talk to God about your day, and read something, right? Something that is not going to like inflame the other parts of your soul, but like, you know, read something, some, uh, read the Bible, read a work of, of theology, read a, a work of philosophy, right? 30 minutes of this uh, before bed, right, is actually an amazing uh, cure. And, and it sounds so homespun because it is, right? It is Plato recognizing that these, out of these tiny beginnings, right, um, out, out of the virtue or the vice of the soul, the order or the disorder of the soul, come all the catastrophes to which the state is heir.